I'm very excited. I appreciate you being here. It's an honor for me to spend the rest of my Sunday night with you guys. Because to me, I don't consider this just an event. I honestly consider this hanging out with my family, and I mean it. Because every single one of you is somebody that allows me to uh, express my knowledge through who I really am and value that knowledge. And I appreciate that about you. So you guys have been showing up for me this whole time. This time I'm showing up for you. So, um, feel free to ask questions as we go. Because what we're going to do, we're going to learn. We're going to practice and we're going to take what we learn with us here and apply it in the, in the actual field. Okay? I want to make it clear from the beginning that you don't have to be going through stress in order to come to this class. You don't need to be going through stress in order to attend this class. It's a matter of the tools that you get a gain from it. And you might need it now, you might need it later. Okay? Because wherever you are in your life right now, you're on a journey and you're on a mission. You gotta be going somewhere. You're going somewhere, okay? Where you going, you know where you're going, okay? But through that ride, there will be a resistance. So there are ways you're going through. So it's either going through stress, meaning pressure or challenge, just came out of it, or about to go through it, okay? So it's the matter of the tools we're gonna use. If you look outside, it's warm, it's sunny, it's summertime. And you might say, well, it's summertime. I don't need winter coat. I don't need a snow shovel. I don't need my uh, snow boots. Yeah, but we all know what comes after summertime. When winter time comes, and you're not prepared, and it snows, that's when you slip and fall. That's when it's going to fall. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look, here's the snow boots. Here is your uh, snow shovel. And here's your winter coat. Use it when you need it. If, you're re if you don't need it now, give it to somebody else that might need it. Meaning share the knowledge of someone that you know to help them progress in their life. Okay? So with that being said, Let's move on. Feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, what makes me an expert in this field? The topic of today is not just a topic. It's more of a lifestyle, and something is not taught in school. They don't teach stress in school. They just give it. So, it's more of a lifestyle. It's with work, our workplace. It's in your relationship is within your personal challenges, and it's with your attitude, it's with your growth, it's with you. And the point is not to avoid it, because it's always going to come back, it's like gravity, but the point is to learn how to deal with it, okay? And I didn't learn what, I've, what I'm teaching today just through going to school, being a certified personal trainer, uh, licensed massage therapist, and meditation instructor, but I learned it through life. The best, the best experience you will learn, the best lesson is through life and not through school. So I collected a bunch of experiences along with the lessons and I'm going to share it with you. And it all started six years ago. As you know most of you, I'm not from here originally. Okay, I was born in Iraq. I moved here 15 years ago and so I'm 30 to 15 years. And I, uh, I've always had passion for fitness. I loved it. Problem was, I don't like to work. Something has nothing to do with my passion. So I worked with my family's liquor store, and I hated it. I don't like to take the garbage out. I don't like to collect the empty bottles and stinky bottles and stack the juice and sell the alcohol. I don't like it. So my challenge was, how can I turn my passion to a career. I started competing in bodybuilding. And if you don't know about bodybuilding, it's a very expensive sport. 
At that time, I'm only making ten dollars an hour. I can't afford it. I was thinking I got to become a champion. Win, and then problem solved. It was nowhere near the truth. I needed a sponsorship. Problem is, I don't speak English. I don't know what to do. How to reach out to companies? How to get my message across? And I don't even know how to email somebody because I don't know how to spell words. Long story short, I thought of what's the what's the most convenient solution for me to do. So I thought of my father, who owns a hotel in north of Iraq, and I thought that he would sponsor me. I spoke to him and I said, Dad. I need your help. I'm gonna run the business for you overseas. In return, and sponsor me for my sport. That's all I'm asking for. I don't care what you want to pay me. Son, you sure you want to do this? Yes, I'm sure. We shake hands. Next thing you know, a month later, I'm in Iraq. You gotta do whatever it takes, right? So I get there, and in the beginning, I was very excited. I was like, wow, I haven't been here so long. But a little old school culture, I miss it kind of. Organic food, handmade stuff, nice. And uh, it was a new experience. Uh, I felt like being a boss over there, we have employees, I have a driver, I have a chef. Wow, problem solved. So my dad teaches me how to run the business, and he leaves. He leaves, I stay. When I stay, it was like a switch. I woke up one day, I'm bored. I don't like being there. I don't care for old school culture anymore. Nothing impresses me anymore. I don't care. I, I want my people. The language is different. The mindset is different. The culture is different. Where am I? What happened? Next thing you know, I'm homesick. Next thing you know, I'm overwhelmed, stressed, pissed off. Don't talk to me. I don't want to see you. Leave me alone. I'm angry and I'm depressed. What do I do? I'm not going to call my dad immediately and say, hey, come save me. He just left, and I got to stick to my word. I pretended that I was fine when I wasn't. I pretended everything's okay and it was not, and that's the number one mistake. Never pretend to be okay when you're not. Reach out, and I did. My ego was too big for that. So I decided to hold my breath, take the hit. I stayed. I look in the calendar, four months left. My depression is going up and I'm and I'm getting frustrated. And I'm talking depression, not like boredom. I'm talking about my skin is peeling. My facial expression, no more smiling. And I'm just being more frustrated. I'm in my room all day. I don't want to see no one. I don't want to talk to no one. I'm losing sleep, barely sleep an hour or two, eating too much, gaining weight, drinking alcohol, smoking gone completely. So I started missing my people back home. So I started to think about my friends and I'm getting homesick and I keep dreaming. If I'm thinking too much, I start dreaming. Then I'm coming back and I'm hanging out with my friends again. But I wake up and it's a dream. And I get pissed off and it happens again, it happens again. And I keep dreaming that I'm back hanging out with my friends. I get excited, but then I wake up, no, I'm still there. Look at the calendar, it's still three months to go. Until even when I, got, when, when I came back, and I finally started hanging out with my friends, and I told them, look, I was, they asked me how was the trip, and I tell them it was painful. It was weird, I keep dreaming that I'm back, and then I wake up and nothing happens. So they told me, look, you're fine, you're fine, you're okay, we're here, we got you, it's, it's real. And that's when I, Take a deep, deep breath in, open my eyes, and it's just another dream. I'm still there, and I'm getting pissed off. Long story short, because I want to get to this, my dad comes back, we shake hands, I tell him, I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore, I need my freedom, I need my passion, I have to go back. So I came back. When I came back, I started personal training. And when I started personal training, that's when I turned my passion to a career. And that's when everything started to change, and that's when I realized how much I'm in emotional trouble and how much my buttons are important for me in order to lead people with positive energy, positive attitude. So 
That's when I, I said to myself, I moved out for three years, I started studying, learning, physiology, psychology, pathology, the anatomy, my personal psychology, meditation practice, all turned to a lesson that I'm gonna share with you today, okay? And my credibility for that, like how do I know it works? So, the way it works, the way I measure it, it's not by the finance aspect of it, but it's more of how people treat me, how people look at me, okay? So, sorry. <clears throat> so things I don't know how to react. So, um, when you get invited to golf courses and meet with, 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 your, with the people that you work with and have them introduce you to their family members and treat you like you're one of their family, you know you've left an impact. You know you've left an impact. I was in Vegas a few months ago. Somebody heard that I was there. It was someone that I trained five years ago said, hey, I see you on social media, you checked in in Vegas, I wanna come see you, even if you got five minutes. Because you've left an impact on me, I appreciate you for doing that. And that's my credibility to teach what I'm teaching with you today. So with that being said, let's get to it. Today's menu is what? Stress, okay? Let me ask you this. Have you been in a scenario where you got into an argument, you leave, and then you just think, yeah, I could have said this instead. Oh, I should have said that instead. Could have said that. And then it runs in your head, right? Or if you pull out your phone and you scroll down on Facebook and you see a video that somebody's getting hurt in that video, and now you're having feeling to, and then you realize, wow, I can't believe this just happened. And you share with a friend, hey, did you hear the public shooting this happened? And now you start feeling differently, right? You start feeling more impacted. What that is, is what is called the imagination. Images, imagination. <laughs> the bunch of images put together in your head is what you see. In that imagination, there is negative and there is positive thoughts that run those images. So whatever that scenario is, if it contains negative energies or thoughts, it's going to make you feel negative and vice versa. Now here's the point. What we want to do in that imagination, along with practice, is if we condense the amount of negativity, increase the positive, we can immediately change how we feel. It's not easy. But it happens with practice. It's simple. Practice. The social muscle. How you talk to yourself. CEOs, successful CEOs, are the masters of this. They do a phenomenal job. Because what runs your business or what runs your successful friendship or your attitude with yourself is how much of this you got versus this one here at the moment. At the moment. So negative imagination versus positive imagination, it's kind of like this. Filtered water versus unfiltered water. Can someone tell me what happens if you put unfiltered water in your system? You get sick. That's exactly what happens when you put the negative imagination in your body or the stress comes in your mind and not being filtered, it will make you sick and it will damage your health. So today I'll show you how to manage stress without damaging your health. Okay? And if you haven't done so, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, give me a follow, and uh, there's a lot of videos to learn from, so check it out later if you want more related topics on uh, self-improvement. <clears throat> Here we go. What is stress? Can someone tell me, what does stress mean to you? A word associated with stress. What would you say? I, to me, it's pressure. What is pressure. it? Yep. Pressure. Pressure, what else? Come on. Huh? Confusion. Confusion, okay. That's true. There's no right or wrong answer. Decisions. I'll explain what that is. What's that? Decisions. Complex decisions. Say it again. Complex decisions. Okay, yeah. Complex decisions. What else? Give me a couple more. Bring it out. What you got in your pocket? Conflict. Okay. Conflict, yes. Resistant. Friction, yep. You're right. Everything you said, you're right. However, I put together based on the imagination concept, I put together my definition for stress. 
Stress is an overload of message units that we receive from our senses that replays in our head in a form of imagination is an overload of message units. So message units build up what we receive from, like right now we receive a message units. Okay, what you hear, what you see, it's accumulating in your head. Okay, and it replays again like a movie. It goes in the head. So whatever you deposit in your mind, through your ears, through your eyes, it shows for the rest of the day, and then the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and then the next month, next year. Okay, so, what causes stress? The cause of stress is two parts. One is the internal, two is the external, inside and outside. The internal part is what goes in your head. The, the thinking pattern that you go through, okay? All that we are is a result of our thoughts. How you feel is exactly because of what's been downloaded in here, okay? Your way of thinking, there are two ways of thinking. No matter what you look at, wherever you're at, you're approaching something through one of the two. Either flexible thinking or rigid thinking. Flexible thinking is the ability to think about something in a new way. Flexible. The ability to think about something in a new way. Well, rigid thinking, rigid, inability to consider new ways to view a current situation or a problem. The inability to consider new ways to view a current situation or a problem. Okay? Great example of uh, rigid thinking. And the first time I used this concept, this is a very powerful concept. If you try that with practice, it dawn wrestling is very, very powerful. Okay? The first time I tried this was uh, about six years ago. I was still working with a family at the liquor store. And they can't, I was a cashier. And we had all kinds of people. We had uh, um, college students. We had, uh, we had alcoholics, drug addicts. And we had, we had those, uh, I call them macho men. And that macho man is somebody who's got that super energy. Like a pit bull without a leash walking around just looking for a trouble. And when the macho man shows up, that's when you know he got some drama to deal with. It was the football season, Ann Arbor, by the, by the, uh, the big house stadium. Um, I'm there, I'm standing from 7 a.m. all the way till like 4 p.m. ish. 10 people in line, ringing up customers. Next, how can I help you? Next, how can I help you? Out of all these people, the macho man shows up. When the macho man shows up, he shows up. He first has to cut the line, and he's drunk. I'm already overloaded with those message units. How can I let this pass by without any, any trouble? So he, he comes up to me. Let me get a shot of vodka. Sorry, sir, I can't sell you alcohol because you've had enough. You're barely walking, and I can smell you, so I'm sorry. Well, you blah, 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 blah. Oh my God, not right now. We got so many people. And I'm thinking, just hold yourself. It'll be fine. Rah, 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 rah. Back and forth, back and forth. And I'm getting pissed off and I'm punching the counter. I turn around then I immediately felt like, Sam, you're being one of these guys, man. You're being a rigid thinker right now. He's saying no, he's saying no. How think you gonna come into an agreement? This is not what you want to do. And I immediately thought of this. So he goes again, let me get alcohol. Sir, I can't sell the alcohol. However, I'm gonna give you this black and mild cigarette for free on me as a way to say I apologize. Would that be fair? You sure? You, I'm sure, yeah, sure. He walks out immediately, I'm coming out like, dang, if I could do this with this guy, I could do this with everybody. I have 10 people standing in line, the first thing started to clap. Dude, that was awesome. How did you think of that? You got it under control. I control the situation. Now, is that important to do with your kid? When your kid says no, what do you say to him? You say, you, you, see, you follow me? If you're in front of a customer, you're trying to close a deal, and you've been a rigid figure, he's walking out. With your spouse, your spouse says no, you say no. Friction, overload of message units. It works, flexible thinking. So, that is something you do from minute to a minute, from everything you approach. 
Try to agree with somebody and have the conversation. Do not resist. Do not say no. Okay? The second cause of stress is the external. The external would be more of the things that goes around us. Our workplace, I gotta submit this paper, I gotta send this email, I gotta meet this customer, I gotta make phone calls, I gotta drive to this place, I gotta come back and pick up the order, to send that back and forth, fax this, send this, overload, overload, no, whoa, can't pay attention anymore. Relationship difficulties, it's one. And not only with, with your spouse or the romantic relationship, but also with yourself. How do you talk to yourself? Where do you go when you hit the wall? Some people lie down in front of that wall. Some people.